A few weeks ago, the TVC mount fell on the floor and broke. I was pretty mad when this happened, but it was a perfect opportunity to redesign. So first, what was there to redesign? I'd already been wanting to make the inner servo platform less bendy. I talked about it in the last video, and I said I could fix it later, because it's not really important right now. This is because, at first, we only want to do single axis tests, meaning only one servo, instead of two servos. For these tests, only the outer servo platform will be used, and the other won't have anything on it. However, since it was now broken, I decided to redesign it right away. All I did was I thickened the platform a little, and I shifted it to the right. This was another problem I found while redesigning. The servo arm in the old design is aligned with the middle of the motor mount, meaning the rest of the servo is way off to the left. This would be fine if the servo didn't have to move, but the inner ring has to move side to side. If it moved left, it would just run into the body tube. Now, the servo is near the middle, so the servo arm is off to the right. You can see that now, the inner ring can move side to side, and the servo doesn't get close to the body tube. Now that we have a good thrust vectoring mount, let's talk about the rest of the rocket. First, we'll talk about the flight computer. We'll use our altimeter, which already includes an Arduino and a data logger, and we'll add on this inertial measuring unit, or IMU, from Adafruit. This specific IMU, the BNO055, has an accelerometer, a gyroscope, and a magnetometer, and it combines all that data so we get the absolute orientation. This is really nice because we don't have to spend a bunch of time trying to figure out how to combine all that data. Once we get the data, we then have to figure out what orientation the rocket's in. This is actually a much harder problem than you might think. The IMU normally knows what orientation it's in by detecting which way the acceleration of gravity is pulling towards. If it's accelerating though, which it will be, it'll measure acceleration pulling in the direction between the direction of gravity and the rocket's direction of acceleration because it'll also measure that. This means that even if the rocket is oriented all the way sideways, it'll just measure something between 0 and 90 degrees, depending on how much the rocket is accelerating. I think I've figured out an equation to solve this, so I'll just make another video about it later. Another thing we still have to figure out is how aggressive to make the system. We'll receive the orientation data, but then we have to actually move the TVC mount. If we move it too much, the rocket will swing back too quickly and start pointing the other direction. If we move it too little, it won't do anything and the error will get worse. We also don't want to move the mount too quickly, because that can start jerking the rocket around. We'll just have to do some trial and error. Having the altimeter on board is also important. When it sees the altitude stop increasing, it'll know it's at apogee, or the highest point in flight. At this point, the computer will eject the parachute. The chute will be housed inside this 3D printed nose cone. It'll be 3D printed as two separate parts, and will act kind of like a payload fairing. They'll open up to let the parachute out. To open the nose cone, we'll use this solenoid. It'll push the nose cone upwards and cause the two pieces to split once they're no longer held together by the body tube. It'll get held in by this 3D printed housing. The housing will get screwed into the rocket and it'll have two eye bolts at the top to tie the nose cone pieces and the parachute to. As I've said before, the first test will be single axis tests with E9 motors. A problem with the E9 is it has an ejection charge and there's no real easy way to remove it. So to make sure it doesn't literally fry all the electronics, we'll use an ejection charge baffle. This is basically a way to block all the flames from an ejection charge. They're usually used on rockets to replace recovery wadding, but here it'll be used to decrease the amount of heat going up the rocket. The way it works is it lets the air through, but the flames get blocked from passing. The reason we're not just using a solid cylinder is because the pressure would blow out the motor. The baffle lets us get rid of the heat, but also lets the pressure disperse. This will be 3D printed, which may not be a great idea, but we've put 3D printed objects in the way of ejection charges before, so the baffle, which has holes in it, should be fine. I'll probably test it on a different rocket before using it on TVC. To protect the electronics, I'll design an avionics bay, which would be very similar to the box design on Zephyr Jr. The reason I haven't designed it yet is because I haven't assembled the computer yet. I'm thinking about making a test rocket just to test the IMU, parachute ejection, and the avionics bay, but I haven't decided yet. We would do this to see if all the new things we haven't tried before actually work, and how we can improve them. If you're wondering when the first launch will be, just check out this list I've made. So yeah, still quite a lot to do, but hopefully we can learn a lot on the way and build a really cool rocket. I hope to be attending our club launches in the next few months, so make sure to not miss those videos. Bye!